Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video tutorial for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the cell rank package. Cell rank is the software. You can use it to study dynamical biological process, for example, the development, regeneration, cancer, and the cell reprogramming data set for single cell genomics and transcriptomics. So cell rank updated the version from cell rank 1 to cell rank 2. So in cell rank 1, we can use it to analyze RNA venosity and the cell similarity. In version 2, we can analyze the cell to time cytotrace, time series, and the metabolic labeling. So here is the workflow for cell rank package. So cell rank requires you use other packages to analyze your single cell RNA sequencing data. For example, the RNA velocity. We can use the SCVINO package to analyze the RNA velocity, then set up panels for cell rank analysis. So once you analyze your single cell RNA sequencing data, use different packages, then you can set here, we have six different panels you can set up to compute the transition matrix. Then we can use the transition matrix to study cell initial and the terminal states, fit probabilities, and the gene expression trends. So in this video tutorial, we are going to do the RNA velocity analysis. Let's go to JupyterLab. You can see here is my notebook. So first we can import the packages for today's analysis. Then we are going to use the pancreas dataset as a demonstration dataset. You can use this code to download the pancreas dataset because I downloaded it already. So I saved it as a pancreas H5AD data. Then we can just use SC read function to load the data. You can see in this data we have 2,531 cells and nearly 28,000 genes. In this data set, you can see it already performed the parental cell to time analysis. So if you want to know how to perform the parental cell to time analysis, you can watch my video tutorial about the parental package. So we have the parental cell to time in this data set. So in this video, we just need to perform the SCVINO analysis to get the RNA velocity trajectories for the pancreas development. So we know that the data, then we can look at the cell clusters. You can see in this data set, we have seven cell clusters, NGN3, NO, and high EP cell clusters. They are progenitors to generate beta cells, alpha cells, delta cells, and the epsilon cells in the pancreas. If you look at the A data, we also have the spliced and the unspliced layers in this data set. The spliced and the unspliced mRNA data is required to perform RNA velocity analysis. So we can have a look at the proportion for the spliced and the unspliced mRNA in this data set. We can run. You can see we generated the figure. In total, there are 81% of mRNA are spliced and 19% are unspliced. Here are the proportion in each cell canister. So now we can go ahead to perform the 
RNA will not say to analysis using the SC vinyl package. So first we need to filter the spliced and the unspliced RNA, then normalize the data. So next we need to compute the first and the second order moment. Depends on which method you are going to use for RNA renocity analysis in the SC vinyl package. The first and the second order moment are required to estimate the velocity. So let's run the SC VPP moments. Now we can run SC Vino analysis. I'm going very quickly for the SC Vino analysis in this video tutorial. If you want to know the details about the SC Vino package, you can read the online tutorial and also I have a video tutorial to show you how to use the SC Vino package. So now we can run the dynamic model for this demonstration and also compute the velocity graph. Let's do the analysis. Because this is a demonstration data set, we don't have a lot of cells in this data set. So it will be very quick to run the dynamic model. If you have a large data set, it will take a very long time to run the dynamic model for the SC Vino package. Okay, you can see it uh, took uh, nearly three minutes to run the recovering dynamics, then just one second to compute the velocity, then three seconds to compute the velocity graph. So we basically finished the SC Vino analysis. Then we can embed the velocity, the trajectories into the U map. First, we can ignore the warnings. Then we can embed the streams. Let's see the trajectories. You can see we generated the RNA velocity trajectories. If you see the SC Vino package, because the SC Vino package also uses this data set for demonstration, you can see we generated the same trajectory map for this data set. In the SC Vino package, the data also contains the doctoral cell cluster in the pancreas. In this data set, they removed it. So we performed the SC Vino analysis. Now we can set up the kernels for cell rank analysis. Because we are going to perform the RNA velocity analysis, so we can set the kernels as a velocity kernel. Let's set up the kernels as a VK. Then we can compute the transition matrix. So you can see for the demonstration data set, it is very quick to compute the velocity transition matrix. So now we can realize the transition matrix using the function in the cell rank package. First, we can project the trajectories. Let's run the plot projection function. You can see it generated the same trajectory map as the SC Vino embedding functions. So you can see the progenitor cells are NGN3 no EP cell clusters. Then they generate other endocrine cell types in the pancreas. So we can plot the random box. This is the function in the cell rank package. We can set the starter cell clusters as NGN3 no EP cells. Let's run 
this is plot function. You can see we generated the random walks, the black dot indicated the initial cell state, and the yellow dot indicated the terminal state itself. So we performed the SC window RNA velocity analysis for the pancreas data set. Then we compute the transition matrix for this data set. So now we can write the transition matrix data into the A data. Let's write it. If you have a look at the A data, you can see we saved the transition matrix data in the observation pairs TFW data slot. So as I mentioned in this data set, if you have a look now, we have the PCA and the UMAP from scan pair analysis for this data set. Then we perform the SC window with no city analysis. Then we have the UMAP for with no city and also we have the UMAP for the transitional matrix calculated by the cell rank package. So we have the transition matrix. We can save the data. Let's save it. So in my next video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform pseudo time analysis for this data set. Then compute the transition matrix using the cell rank package to create a pseudo transition matrix for this data set. So I hope to see you in my next video tutorial for the cell rank package.